All right, everybody, welcome to the video. It is open beta time, which means that Christmas came early. So we're here to crack some packs, get into new standard, and man, I'm excited for open beta. So without further ado, let's just crack some packs. I love cracking me some packs. So we're gonna go ahead and go some Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Dominaria, M19, and of course, Guilds of Ravnica. So we got a Safer Sanctuary, good sideboard green card here, and Let's go ahead and move on to the next pack here. So I'm hoping for some check lands for Ixalan because I need to make some three colored jank. Bishop of Rebirth, solid card in Vampires. All right, let's see what we got here. Next up, we have, oh, Varaska's Contempt. Great removal spell. Definitely gonna go into some Golgari decks I wanna brew up. All right, next up on the list. I really want to get a Star of Extinction, so we did. <laughs> yes! All right, Star of Extinction, so we can get the uh, that combo going down with that new uh, Rivals of Ixalan card here. So Star of Extinction, super sweet there. Definitely going to be one of the decks that we brew up. All right, got some rare cards, got some wild cards. There is a Gishap Sun's Avatar. Well, it looks like uh, we're going to have to ride some Nio Dinos again. Yeah, new, new Ravnica, new Standard. Farewell, Kaladesh. You will not be missed. Deep Root Champion. Yeah, so uh, Guild is going to be super sweet. I like all the mechanics. I like all of the stuff that's going down. Uh, three color decks are going to be amazing. And it's just going to be a good time to brew. Alright, Glacial Fortress. There we go. Uh, definitely liking Jeskai because uh, the, ch the check lands and the shock lands are going to be so good. Um, so Glacial Forge is going to come in untapped with both Sacred Foundry and the uh, Is It Land. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the uh, on the gate there. Dowsing Dagger, solid card there. Good little piece of equipment. All right, got us another wild card. Sanctum Seeker, another solid inclusion in the Vampires list. So, I definitely like the fact that all the gems from Open Beta were returned to you, so that's pretty cool. There! Yes! Varaska Relic Seeker. Six mana Planeswalker, six loyalty. This card is going to be a house in new standards. She ultimates insanely fast, and it's just super flexible, super versatile. So, glad we got us a Varaska here. We're going to throw her into some decks. Alright. Next up. Tilanali's skin shifter um i don't know what i think about this card i like it i think it's cool but it's just so much blowout potential but if we got it we'll definitely see what we can do with it all right charter course pretty solid another glacial fortress there we go love me some land so if you notice the way that i bought the packs i bought primarily ixalan dominaria and ravnica and that is because i'm going after these check lands they're going to be super important into the new standard and i know it's not the the coolest thing to do is spend rare wild cards on but if you want to improve your decks improving your mana base is the number one way to squeeze out more win percentage your lands coming in untapped your lands coming in all your colors is going to make your decks more powerful all right we get a dream caller siren so solid include in the pirates deck and another drowned catacomb all right so we are getting we're getting the soul tie lands that we need. We got two Drowned Catacombs, two Glacial Fortress. That's a pretty solid hit for me. And there is old Regisaur Alpha. Solid include in Dinosaurs. Definitely going to go in that Gishaft deck. That we are more than likely going to throw together. Alright, Herald of Secret Streams. I'm not sure how Merfolk is going to do in this new uh, standard, but Merfolk, definitely a house. Definitely can be scary whenever you get the right draws. And, uh, Alright, so our last Ixalan card is Burning Sun's Avatar. So that does it for all of our Ixalan. Now let's go ahead and jump over to Rivals of Ixalan. So, Rivals, um, there's not a ton that I really want out of Rivals. Uh, but I do think all of the flip lands are pretty good. And we get, a uh, Mimasaurus Rex here. Zatalfa having Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. Uh, we don't have Soul Flayer in this set, so, uh, just a big old dino. Uh, and if there's a green-white ramp take, it's actually not a bad payoff on the top end, so not bad. Mastermind's Acquisition, get a little tutor target there. Alright, next up, we get a Vona's Hunger. 
uh, ascend, lets you sacrifice some creatures, so decent piece of removal depending on how the meta looks. Uh, actually might be good if Teferi's become a thing, being able to sac make them sacrifice their Teferi, sacrifice their Planeswalker. Oh, Sphinx's Decree. If only it had draw a card, it'd be good. I do not like Sphinx's Decree at all. Uh, it is a card, though. It is a card that is in the set. Oh, we get a Legion Lieutenant. There we go. Slaughter the Strong. Now, this is a fantastic either main board or sideboard card, depending on what your meta is. Very effective. If people go big, you can punish them pretty heavily. And you get to keep some of your stuff, too. Whoo! There is a Galta Primal Hunger. Going into this new set, I think Mono Green Stompy is going to be really good. And the Forest Mites deck is going to be probably the first one you want to upgrade whenever you uh, get in your new set. Another Legion Lieutenant. Looks like we might be playing a little bit of Vampires. And speaking of Vampires, Radiant Destiny. Great, great card for the Vampires deck because they, they do go wide with a lot of tokens and giving them plus one, plus one in Vigilance makes them almost impossible to race. Like, your opponent has to have a Wrath. Alright, next up. Silent Gravestone, a card that actually might be pretty relevant in this new standard. So, great sideboard card there. Um, depending on how crazy the meta is, actually might be a good main board card as well. So, so far, our packs are, our packs are pretty sweet. I'm liking what they're giving us so far. Alright, a rare wild card. Those are going to be important. That's probably going to end up being a shock land or a check land. Gotta get them, gotta get them lands. Lands, lands, lands. Oh, right, a Mythic Wild card. There we go. We are getting some good hits today. RN Jesus is smiling upon us. All right, there's Forerunner of the Heralds. Like, I think might be really good in Merfolk decks, like I say, if they do become a thing. Um, we get Form of the Dinosaur. Interesting card. Um, Good in Sealed and Draft. Uh, kind of 50-50, but interesting card nonetheless. I do like the flavor, like basically you become a dinosaur and kind of fight everything. Like, I can appreciate flavor like that. Alright. Oh, Thrashing Brontodon, great card. And Nezahal Primal Tide. Now, I think this is going to be the go-to blue finisher in control decks. Um, if you're not teching with Nezahal in mind for the control meta, um, I think you're going to have a rough time. 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, does exactly what a control deck wants to do. It's big, it's flexible, it has protection. It can draw you some cards and can get super out of hand. And actually, against the control mirror, it's going to be a race to see who can get Nezahal down. So, great card. And I think it's going to be a big player in this new standard. All right, next up, we have Seafloor Oracle. Uh, so, cool card in the Merfolk, especially because this triggers never any Merfolk deals. So, if you hit with two Merfolk, you draw two cards. Uh, hit with three, you draw three. So, it's not just never one or more. So, it gets... You get multiple hits out of it. Card that definitely snowballs out of hand, especially if they're unblocked or Merfolk. Ah, Merfolk. Tongue twister. Alright, some good uncommons there. We get Chaloops, Magoops, and Merfolk Mistbinder. And another Silent Gravestone. So there you go, another sideboard card. Not bad. Not bad. And of course, our last Rivals of Ixalan pack. We get a Trap Jaw Tyrant. Well, it looks like Gishath is going to be looking good, so... Uh, this will jump us off of our two block set. And let's go to our one block sets in Dominaria. So let's see some check lands become a thing. So we get Grun, the Lonely King, and our rare is Ariel, Knight of Wind Grace. That card is super sweet, and I actually think that uh, tokens might actually be in the Abzan color. We tried out some Abzan lists, and Ariel is going to be a great include in that deck as well. Um, it is kind of full of four drops right now, but definitely a good card to test. Oh, speaking of knights, Avrod the Curse. Great card. Embolus is clutches. Super sweet. All right, so for far as we got us a check land. There we go. So that'll go very nicely with our Glacial Fortress there. Icy Manipulator, solid card. First pickable in Sealed and Draft. And History of Banalia. There we go. So it looks like our Knights deck is going to be coming together. So History, I think, is going to be a great card moving forward into New Standard. I think that Knights are going to be one of the go-to decks. There's a lot of support for it, and History of Benalia is the truth. And oh man, probably one of my favorite cards in Dominaria, Valduke, Keeper of the Flame. We will definitely be looking at an Aura's deck, because Valduke, with this little Arcane Flight here, that is some value. 
And there we go, Siege Gang Commander. I think goblins might be pretty sweet going into this new format. Uh, so CGA Commander, great include in that. And moving right along, little kicker elf there. Verdant Force, man. Uh, <clears throat> so in the Selesnia Tokens deck, this might actually be a good include, uh, especially with Song of Frailies, because Song of Frailies is just the truth that could possibly ramp us into that Verdant Force. All right, there is Togar, Famine, Incarnate. Uh, if there's life gain decks, this is the thing that can help check it. So I like Togar, can come down pretty early. And a good sacrifice outlet in the Golgari decks as well. So like me some Togar. Oh, there's old Slimy Foot the Stowaway. Yeah, it looks like this Tokens deck is going to be coming together. And speaking of Tokens, Jasu Vest Lich Knight. This card is going to be... I love this card. It's such a house. Like, in a green-black ramp deck, like, that ability just to kick it and get eight two twos. that is 20 power for nine mana. That is... It's a lot of mana, but it pays you back for it. All right, so got some some wild cards. Phyrexian Scriptures. Man, I actually never pulled a Phyrexian Scriptures in any of my... Uh, in any of these packs so far. It's actually my first Phyrexian Scriptures. So four mana. Uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Becomes an artifact. You destroy all non-artifact creatures and exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. Um, I really think Scriptures is going to see a lot more play because you get that Wrath and you get that Incidental Exile ability. So great Mythic there. Definitely going to be something we're going to throw in some decks. Alright, next up, we get Avara Halcyon Witness. Uh, six mana, four, four. Get to exchange your life total and has life link. So it's definitely a threat. Um... Not sure how good it is, especially because there's a lot of blowout potential, but it's a cool card nonetheless. Alright. And got a Dampening Spear, so oh, you better watch it, Storm Dex. We're going to be coming for you. And there is Shalai, Voice of Plenty. Great card. Great card in tokens. Uh, great card in knights, actually. Just that Hexproof ability is pretty good. And the ability to put plus one, plus one counters on creatures you control is, is no joke. So Shalai, great card. Really looking forward to playing it in New Standard. Alright, and there is Tetsuo, old Rat Commander himself. Uh, I, people might be trolling with the Rat Colony Tetsuo combo, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And there's a Badalish Marshal. I really like this card going into this new format. It is a knight, uh, it does Anthem stuff, and in Tokens decks, this is going to be the card that's going to beat the Goblin Chain Whirler, which, once again, don't think is going to be too big of a player, but that Anthem effect. And tokens do not overlook it. All right, next up we get oh Giblin Chain Whirler himself. So uh, I did make a video about what I think about Goblin Chain Whirler. Um, I think it's going to be a decent player in New Standard, but I don't think it's going to be the boogeyman that everyone thinks it is. Uh, we did lose a lot of pieces from Red, so it's really going to depend on how good Goblins is and how good Mono Red is. And I just don't think there's a payoff here. Like I think you have to go Red White if you want to be aggressive. And I have played it in so a couple of lists, and I was not able to guarantee him coming down on turn three. So we'll see Goblin Chain Whirler moving forward. See if uh, my theory is right or wrong. Uh, but either way, we got us one. So there's another Avara. All right, next up we get Zephyr and Void. That's an interesting little card. The Mending of Dominaria. Um. So I've always wanted to play this deck alongside um, Yavimaya Awakening, I believe this is what it's called. It's a three mana sorcery that makes all your, your lands become two twos. Uh, but I think Mending of Dominaria is going to be pretty good. Um, it's very, very slow, so it does require a very grindy meta, but it's definitely a powerful card. And do not blame anybody for putting that in their green decks. Another Togar, another Sack Outlet. All right, come on, let's get something sweet. I need me some, I need me some lands. Oh, Merfolk Trickster, great card. Another Jasu Vest, never, never against that. I usually run a two of of him in decks that I run him. And there is an Oath of Teferi. Not necessarily the Teferi that we want, but a sweet Teferi card nonetheless. All right, next up, we get another Avara, man. I think, I think it's just telling us we got to build a deck around this. I mean, we have three so far, so... Put that on the brew station. All right, and Moltrotha the Grave Tide. Oh, I'm so excited to build this card. This is the deck I am wanting to build 
an M19 standard. I'm glad we got the Varaska. I'm glad we got the Moldrotha. We're getting the lands. This card is going to be amazing. Like, it is... It is a 6 mana 6-6 six, six that does nothing, but the value tide is so insane. So glad we cracked a Modrotha there. Love that card. I'm going to jam it in some games, so super excited. Gilded Lotus. Uh, great commander card, but we do not have commander on arena yet. So here we go. Last card in Dominaria. Let's get that Teferi. It is not a Teferi. It is a Mishra Self-Replicator. I will say this. Um... It is a card that is boom or bust in draft. I have beaten it pretty easily and then have gotten beaten down by it. So, pretty solid card. So, that is the end of Dominarius. Let's go ahead and go to Core Set. Now, I just want to run through this so we can get to Guilds of Ravnica. Like, I am ready for some sweet stuff. Demanding Dragon. There we go. That's a good little dragon card there. I think this is going to be a big player in red decks moving forward. Um, and I think the Dragons is going to get some play too. There's a lot of cool dragon cards. That are in the set. There's a Demon of Catastrophes. Uh, if you play this alongside Land War Elf, you get a 6 mana 6-6 six, six for three on turn 3. So that's pretty cool. I uh, might be trying that out. Uh, just a great sacrifice outlet and a pretty reasonable payoff. Alright, we get us a rare wild card. So get some of the lands that we need. Get all the rare wild cards. A Johnny's Welcome. I don't know if there's going to be a big life gain deck. But ooh, there is Gore Claw. Man, I think Mo Mono Green Stompy is going to be so good. Like, that is the deck that I'm looking forward to. I think that some of these rares might actually need to be settled the wreckage in uh, Cleansing Novas. Because we're going to need to wipe the board a lot. And, oh, here's Dragon's Heart Horde. A card I want to talk about for a quick second. I think this is the ramp payoff you need to be in. This is why I think Dragon's going to be super viable. It's a ramp spell on three. It ramps you, it fixes you, and it draws you cards. Dragon's Horde is one of the best ramp artifacts, I think, that is in M19 and makes the dragon deck hum. So, super excited that we got a Dragon Horde there. Uh, I want to rebuild my Jun Dragon's deck that I had in closed beta. And there is Phylactery Lynch, an interesting little card. Don't know how good it's going to be. I don't know how many artifacts are going to be played, but if there's few artifacts being played, that means there's less artifact removal, which makes the Lich a little better, but I'm not I'm not really sure. Don't know where I land on Phylactery Lynch. It's definitely powerful, but the deck building requirements just kind of don't really do it for me. Oh, there's a Johnny's Pride Mate. Oh, Life Gain Cats. All right, a Mythic Wild card. There we go. That might be Varaska number two but i don't know how good life gain decks are going to be but uh pride mate is a card that gets out of hand really quickly um and i think in actually whenever the next ravnica set comes out the Orozov guild is going to be pretty solid and see pride mate played in that deck a lot so whoo another demanding dragon there we go so demanding dragon dragon egg all making those dragon hordes bigger all right next up we get a Bit flame. Well, hey, they are telling us to play some dragons. Three mana instant. Deals four damage when a dragon enters the battlefield under your control. You pay a red and you do return spit flame from your graveyard to your hand. So, good little repeatable removal spell. Also, really good to discard to three mana Sarkin. Uh, basically, for free. So, cool card. I dig it. <clears throat> Apex of Power. Um, There's something here. I don't know what, but it's definitely sweet. So we'll uh we'll see if anything becomes of that. All right, we get us a detection tower. Um, I think it's actually a pretty sweet sideboard card. Or depending on what your mana base looks like, might be a good main board. It does get around around Shalai and actually gets rid of the Vine Mirror too. Which, if Stompy becomes a thing, you're gonna need to be answer Vine Mirror because Vine Mirror put the prodigious growth on it is gonna be something that happens a lot, especially Blanch with armor as well. Oh, there's old Bone Dragon. Uh, with Golgari, that could actually be a pretty sweet include in those decks. Uh, so, like Bone Dragon, pretty good card. Magistrate's Scepter. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, but it is cool. I love taking extra turns, because when you take extra turns, it lets you draw extra cards. Which is pretty sweet. Murder. So, I actually think Murder is a little bit better than Cast Down now, because it's so flexible. So, Murder definitely going to see some play. And one with the machine. I'm sad now. This makes me really sad that Metalwork Colossus is gone. Because this, with Metalwork Colossus, with Psychic Corrosion, was just so cool. You drew so many cards and milled them out for so many. It was just great. I will miss it. Another Pride Mate. And Runic Armistor. Um, I don't know about this card. Like, it's sweet in Commander. So if you're 
playing in paper and want a commander card, this is a great ability. I just don't know how good it's going to be in standard, but it is a 2-5, so it does block basically anything. And it's a good little roadblock on your ramps, on your ramp stamp. Goblin Trash Master. There we go. Another Goblin Lord there. Uh, gives anything plus one, plus one, and gets a sack of Goblin and destroy target artifact. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, Militia Bugler. That's a pretty solid card as well. And we get Metamorphic Alteration. Um, Yeah, I guess this might be the way to make the Demir Legendary do its thing where you get to exile him a couple times. You do make a copy of it, but uh, it also serves as kind of a removal spell as well. So definitely an interesting card. Uh, you can do a lot with it. All right, Gift of Paradise. Good little ramp card. An Amulet of Safekeeping. Now, this is going to be an interesting little card against Selesnya tokens. So, it might be a good sideboard card. It just depends on if they're going wide and antheming. This will lose a lot of value, but at the very least, it does counter their first anthem. So, Amulet of Safekeeping, great card. All right. So, oh, we're almost out of course at 19. That's exciting. So, I'm ready to get to some Ravnica. Transmogrifying Wand. Uh, good little removal removal card. Um, good, in, good in sealed. Good in draft. Um, decent in your decks that need some removal so just kind of gets rid of a creature upgrades it so not bad not bad at all could be a nice little combo with the phylactery lynch all right alpine moon okay we're done here let's go ahead and get into guilds of ravnica oh i'm so excited that we get this early in open beta all right so uh leapfrog oh that's kind of cool Leapfrog has flying unless you cast an instant or... As long as you can. Oh, that's... I like that card. I don't even know why, but I just like Leapfrog. All right, so we get Connive and Concoct. So I do like Concoct in that Moldrotha deck. Uh, don't know about the Connive part of it, but definitely an interesting card. I can, uh, I can definitely appreciate it. And I do like the way they did the art on the... The art in Arena. That's pretty cool. All right. Oh, more split cards. Integrity Intervention, great card. Invert Invent. Uh, I think this card is going to be really cool. In that uh, deck where I'm building Star of Extinction, I'll probably end up putting this in there to dig for the Star of Extinction that I need. <clears throat> All right, Mausoleum Secrets. Uh, Undergrowth Tutor card lets you search for a black card with CMC equals number of creature cards in your graveyard. Uh, I actually think this could be really cool in uh, Modern in the As For Told Living In deck. It can just guarantee that you hit that Living In. So, cool card. And I, it is a tutor, so cool in Commander. Don't know how good it will be in Standard, but it isn't the speed in 2 mana, so can't hate on that. Yes, there he is, True Fire Captain. So, this is the one I want to combo with Star of Extinction, because whenever this gets dealt the 20 damage, it's going to 20 our opponent. So, we're going to have that combo online, and... Mission Briefing. So people are talking about this being the new Snapcaster Mage, or at least a standard equivalent of Snapcaster Mage, and I gotta be honest with you, I think it's gonna be good. Uh, the difference with Snapcaster Mage is that you don't get a body, but I think that this is gonna be really good. Um, especially in Control Mirrors, this might be something good to slot in. Um, the Surveil and the ability to rebuy a card is is pretty solid, and is actually really good in Is It decks too. I think that... Um, even though it's a Demir card, you're probably going to put it into your Is It Wizard decks. And speaking of Goblin Electromancer, uh, this card here is going to be a house. So cool that we got those cards. <coughs> All right, next up, we get a ooh Venerated Loxodon. I like this card a lot in like Boros Aggro decks and Tokens decks. And this is one of the reasons why I think that. Chain World is going to get shut down because this Venerated Loxodon can come down on turn 3, pump your team, and leave a 4-4 behind. So, I am I'm a fan of the Loxodon. I am definitely a believer. Alright, next up. Golgari Locket, pretty good. Goblin Crater Maker. Good little Goblin card. Um, if there is a Goblin deck, this will play a part in it. And we get Midnight Reaper. When a non-token creature you control dies, it deals 1 damage to you and draw a card. So, good little sacrifice payoff there. Uh, doesn't work with tokens, though, so that's kind of unfortunate. Selective Snare. Now, this is actually going to be a pretty good sideboard card that can get rid of a lot of tokens. And a Vivid Retrieval. 
I think it's alright. It's pretty good. Return three target multicolor cards from your graveyard to your hand. A little slow, but if you don't have anything else for some card advantage in green, I think this will work out. So not the best, but not the worst. Alright, come on. I need me some shock lands here. Ionize. Uh, I think this is going to be a great card in Is It Wizards. Oh, cool. The, the store is online. What do you know? All right, so I and I is pretty good, gonna be pretty good in Wizards decks that can really capitalize on it. Other than that, I mean, it's it's just a counter spell, um, a little bit easier to cast blue red, but Wizards will take the most advantage of it. Other decks will just be a cancel. All right, next up, Conclave Guild Mage, pretty solid. Oh, correction, I forgot about Price of Fame. I think that this might be a pretty good card as well because it's both cast down and it's murder and you get to surveil too so correction i think this might see some play over murder it just depends on what the difference between three and four is so depending on how fast the format is that will make all the difference and ooh, swift blade vindicator um i think this card is powerful uh, i know people were saying oh it gets killed by chain whirler but with mentor it's double strike vigilance and trample you slap one or on this it's good like I, I think this card is really powerful and should definitely be something that you keep in mind all right so we don't have anything amazing yet from guilds thought erasure uh, i like this card uh just a blue and a black get something out of their hand lets you surveil runaway steamkin uh i think this card's gonna be cool in some spell slinger decks uh lets you remove some counters Add some mana, get some beats, so pretty cool card. Come on, I want me a four mana Varaska. That's what I need in my life. Alright, response and resurgence. Uh I think this card is going to end a lot of games. I think it's good in control on the response end, and I think the resurgence is gonna be good in aggressive decks. So um yeah, don't, don't be surprised if you lose to this card. Um, I've already kind of reconciled myself to getting smacked in the face with, with that card already. All right. <laughs> Inescapable Blaze. Oh, that's funny. It can't be countered. That's kind of funny. All right. Another Runaway Steamkin. All right. Ten more packs to go. Let's see if this back end gets pretty good. Oh, Plague Crafter. I really like Plague Crafter. Um, I think it's going to be a good answer if Teferi starts taking over because those control decks don't have a lot of creatures, if any. And this is just, hey, sacrifice your Planeswalker, which is amazing. All right, well, it might not be a shock land. We can definitely turn it into one. We get us a rare wild card. And we get a couple jumpstart cards. Uh, I think this could be a good little cantrip in those Is It Wizards deck that are caring about prowess. So... We didn't see an Adelie's in our packs, but Adelie's is going to be pretty cool. Might of the Masses. This is going to be a good little pump spell in... A good little pump spell in Tokens decks. And Pause for Reflection might be a good replacement in those Turbo Falls decks. Another Mausoleum Secrets. Secrets? Oh, it's like I'm hunting rabbits. I cannot pronunciate my cards. Alright, another True Fire Captain. The deck is coming together. <laughs> All right, and there we go. The card that everybody is talking about. Assassin's Trophy. Um, I think this card is just good. I think it's solid. Uh, I think that the earlier you play it, the worse it's going to be. But in the late game, a good catch-all is pretty good, especially in best of one queues. Um, I think that if you're playing best of one, you should just make four Assassin's Trophies because it's very flexible and it should never really be dead in your hand. So, All right, we did it. We got an Assassin's Trophy. All right, next up, we get Watery Grave. There we go, Shockland for our Soul Tide deck. Uh, Beam Splitter Mage, I think is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, gets to copy some stuff and Electrostatic Field. I think that uh, there's gonna be a Gutter Snipe style deck that's going to come together. That's gonna be pretty cool. So there's gonna be some Gutter Snipe Smell Sling, and I do like the art on the Sure Strike though. Sure Strike a pretty solid combat trick. <clears throat> All right, five more packs after this one, so let's see what we get. Necrotic Wound, pretty solid. Uh, Chemist's Insight, I think he's going to slot right into where um, Glimmer of Genius was in Control Decks. Like, it does stuff a little bit different, but you get to draw two cards. You don't get the Scribe, but you do get the benefit in the late game of discarding a land and drawing two more cards. So that's pretty good. All right, and we get us another Mythic Wild card, so that's definitely going to be probably a Planeswalker. Probably something else. Don't know. See what we get. 
Another Midnight Reaper. Uh, Rock's Trawler. Crushed Contraband. Great card there. Exiling an artifact and an enchantment. Do like some flexibility in these best of ones. Another Mythic Wild card. There we go. Well, these last couple packs are being very nice to us. So let's see if we can get the Guilds of Ravnica Love going. Oh, I think this is going to be a good card in the Slesnia Tokens deck. Like, something that attacks and can make you another token. Um, great card. Something you can mentor on. Pretty solid. Oh, speaking of tokens, we get Tristani Discordant. Uh, the kind of a new incarnation of Regal Kiracle. And actually, if Hostage Taker becomes a thing, this next line of text isn't completely irrelevant. Good in Commander, but... It is extra value, but you get an Anthem, you get some bodies, and solid, solid card. Excited for Tristani there. Oh, there's a Goblin Banneret. I think that card's going to be insanely good in Goblins if it becomes a thing. Guild Mages Forum. A new land. Add one mana of any color. Okay, that's pretty cool. Just a utility land that lets you put an additional counter on something. Alright, here we go. Last Guilds of Ravnica pack. Let's see what we get. All right, we get for our rare Bounty of the Might. Uh, yeah, this card will, this card's going to end games. Like, this card is going to end a ton of games. Uh, I actually like the flavor text. Uh, this is something that in Sealed, in Draft, in Limited, and even, I would argue, in Tokens decks, putting a 1-0 of this is not bad. I mean, this represents 9 damage for 6 mana, so... Not a bad card to end on. So there you have it, guys. That is just some uh, open beta pack openings. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we will see you next uh, video. Thanks.